I'm a business development manager here at PMG. You may remember me from such webinars as Is Your Service Catalog Built for Change and How the Service Catalog Saved the World. Today I'm joined by the PMG A team in the form of Janesh Naik, Gabe Perella, and John Ortiz. Janesh is a service delivery manager here at uh, PMG. Gabe is our product manager, and John is also a client manager, as you can see, devilishly handsome. A little bit of housekeeping about uh, this webinar. It is scheduled for 30 minutes. You can ask questions via the questions window, and we'll take them after presentation time provided. And a, re a recording of this webinar will be provided by PMG post-event, should you want to come back in and listen to any of my witticisms. Is that even a word? A little bit about the agenda. First of all, we're going to talk, talk about the enterprise service platform. And, and again, uh, what, we're, what we're trying to get everybody to engage here is the idea of taking the service catalog beyond traditional IT service catalog functionality. How can you provide, uh, uh, how can you enable the, the enterprise to overcome some of its challenges with the platform that you may already have or the platform that you're investigating uh, and evaluating out there in the market to bring in-house. So to that end, we're going to talk about three case studies where our clients actually did take their enterprise service catalog and they went well beyond uh, typical service catalog functionality. The first is HR process improvement and employee self-service. The second is data center management via cloud store. And last but not least, managing business and financial compliance with one of our clients. And the three gentlemen I already introduced will be taking each of those. First of all, uh, first off, let's talk a little bit more about the enterprise service platform. Uh, and again, this is this idea of a single pane of glass where your customer, who is your end user, which is your coworker, your colleague, uh, we call them now business consumers, they have to get things from the enterprise. And the enterprise service platform gives you that single pane of glass where they can make requests and then track the fulfillment of those requests, whether it be for identity, access management. It might be something to do with operations. It may be IT financial management. Uh, and of course, one of the case studies we're going to talk about today is cloud service. And this all coincides with what you're doing with your full catalog is providing the brother of it, hardware, software, telecom, access to systems, et cetera. So, continue to think about the enterprise service catalog as a platform where you can uh, expose your user to more than just the IT services you provide. So first up, uh, and to talk us through how one of our clients did exactly that, gone beyond service catalog, is Janesh. He's going to talk to us about HR process improvement and employee self-service uh, with a, this happens to be a Fortune 100 company. Uh, I think when it comes to HR process improvement, this could be a company from 1,000 employees or it could be a company of 100,000 employees. This one happens to be very large, but if you're with an organization that's much smaller, uh, this still probably applies to you as well. So, Janesh, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, thanks, Russell. You know, as you mentioned, I'm working with a client that's in the Fortune 100. They're, a, they're an industry leader in the food and beverage uh, space. They have uh, over 100,000 employees and a global presence in 80 plus countries. We've been uh, working with them since 2009 where we implemented an IT service catalog. This revolved around SAP access control, contractor access management, and vendor access management. Again, these are your typical IT services, more of improving the employee self-service through provision. So you fast forward today, and this client's HR department, they had an initiative. They also wanted to improve their employee self-service. They wanted a tool where they could drive users to to improve their organization. They wanted to increase efficiency and also need to reduce some redundancy within HR. So they reached out to the top research firms and they presented them with their use case. And these the research firms came back based on based on requirements and suggested a list of traditional BPM vendors. So the client went through a software vendor selection process and they narrowed this list down to three vendors. At the end of the process, all three vendors, they were not able to meet the requirement and most importantly, were over budget. So HR had to go back to the drawing board. So uh, sorry to interrupt, but did HR, did they consult IT when they were doing this vendor evaluation for, for a BPM tool? Uh, 
the question initially they did not. They went straight to the research research firm. But after the process, we were not able to identify a vendor. They did consult IT, okay. and IT recommended a solution PMG based on their our work that we did essentially six years ago. So they already had the PMG tool in place, and IT recognized they might be able to help HR who brought them this challenge Correct. to solve it. Correct, because we're doing some employee software through provisioning, so this was just really another set of requirements around it. So we went through the same vendor selection process that the other vendors went through, and we were able to meet all the requirements, and most importantly, we were under budget. So we got involved in an employee self-service project for HR on three key components knowledge management, case management, and correspondence management. Okay, so, so let's get a little more color on those. Those are pretty broad categories. And uh, tell me about uh, how how this tool is being leveraged to manage uh, knowledge, case, and correspondence management. Yeah, uh, so knowledge management is the process of capturing and distributing knowledge. So what does that mean? So a good example is, let's say you just recently had a, a baby, and you want to know your company's paternity policy. Right, a lot of organizations, that might mean maybe you're sending an email or you just walk down the hall and try to figure out what, what is the policy. So with, with having a tool in place, by implementing the tool, we can drive the employee to the tool. Again, that's self-service. And the, the employee can do a, a search. So they search for a fraternity policy. And we can present them the actual policy and they can see what, what their company's policy is. And it's nice that with our tool, we know a little bit about person in the search. Right, so we can do both teaching based um, searching. So let's say you're a US based employee, so we can present you a US policy. So let's say someone from the from the European nation is doing a uh, search, we present them with the Europe policy. And so the next component of this is case management. The case management is the coordination of services. In the, in this case, HR services that may involve human interaction. So a good example of that is let's say you recently got married and you're looking to change your name. So we can submit a case. The employee will come into the tool, submit a case, and request that their uh, name get changed. Then our tool will, uh, our tool will have the work of the kickoff, and it will, in the process, will go to the, to the manager for approval. They can, uh, they can review the case, and they can uh, approve the case, and then they're routed to the agent. And then they can review the case and they can make the changes in the employee records file. And all that communication will be found in the case agent, also what we call course files. And this is what we leveraged standards as a template to manage all the communication. Okay, that's great. Um, so these IT, they're IT heroes now, I imagine, because they uh, not only did they make HR aware that they already own the tool, that the organization has the tool, that's a challenge for them. Uh, better, but yeah. better. Well, thank you, Janesh. Next up, we're going to have Gabe Perella walk us through the data center management at Cloud Store, a marketing firm who also does managed services for a select number of clients. Uh, so with that uh, background, I'll Gabe here. Well, thank you, Russell. Um, that's right. So, I'm working with the managed branch of a marketing technology company headquartered in the U.S. Um, and over the phone, so as there's, you would call the help. You you would take the phone, dial, and be routed to somebody at the help desk. Um, you tell what you wanted, they would give you a request number and that is not right. Uh, and that has worked explicitly well for them, but as it has continued to grow, they are aware that eventually that would scale. And so um, they basically put a team together and set up and find a product that would allow them to a cloud door that the customer is connecting. Um, so, it comes back. They were really interested for a cloud management platform. Mm -hmm. um, and in the end, decided to go with the service catalog primarily for two reasons. 
Um, the first was the user experience that they could get through the second and the second was for the ability and the, their ability to manage the business process through catalog. Um, the from a user experience side, they considered their pages and forms, um, made it abstracted, all technical, but um, the type that you traditionally see in your services. Um, and from a business process side, the workbench and so now to meet customer specific needs uh, from the process you'd like to to this portal is so are you saying that this is a single portal? Is this a multi tenancy uh, deployment? Yeah, that's right. Um to your point it, it is a multi tenant solution, um, all within a single instance. So the customers I mentioned um, are all customers from different organizations, all accessing the same system, but nobody sees anything more than they're supposed to. Oh. Um, to them, it's you know it's their world. They're, they're the only ones in the system as far as they know. Um, with that, they you know this kind of goes back to the earlier user experience. One of the reasons they chose to go this route is it was certain product features. The forms is the one that stands out to me. Um, to, to to build out the solution. So um, what they were able to do is they were able to build out, they created these submodules using things like shared forms that are all anywhere. Um, and this there's a value in doing this for two reasons. One, um, up front it really cut down development time. Um, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, this this was really all developed like from start to finish in a little under eight weeks, right? Wow. Um, and then long term it sets them up really well for new customers. So where they typically would have had to build the same form for each customer because they've leveraged these reusable modules like shared forms, you know, they're in a great position to onboard new customers. So if they, they add the customer to the system and the customer is ready to go. There's no additional configuration needed. I'd say that's a competitive advantage that they part of their sales pitch to their customers is how quickly they can bring them into the system and have them set up. Yeah, completely. Completely I agree. Um, I guess with that, let me let me tell you a little bit more about the whole solution. Um, so the solution that, that they've built um, encompasses full lifecycle management of infrastructure, right? Um, so what they've done is they they've created this cloud store and they publish services to their customers to request virtual infrastructure, uh, things like virtual machines, right? Um, it's self-service. They go in, they pick what they want. It, it, it's right through the process of inventory provision. Um, on the platform. From that point, they have they can take action on that machine, and a lot of a lot of what they're able to do are actions that have typically been reserved to like virtual ad, you know VM admins. So um, things like powering machines on and off, uh, updating CPU and RAM, um, even coordinating backups and snapshots, things that we would typically go to an admin in our company to do. Um, they are now enabled and have the and can do it for themselves um, from the catalog, um, and, and you know that that's kind of what they offer their customer, right? But they 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 have something to gain from this as well. And for them, um, because everybody's coming through one portal, they can now track who was there, what was there, what they requested. Um, so apart from the experience that they're offering the customers, they have all the information, and they they can collect that at the end of the month, and they're using that to support their billing process as well. Wow. Um, I think one one last note. Um, I was listening to Janesh talk about the the journey that that um, his customer took and how they went from like an IT service catalog to HR. Um, and, and I think that's kind of the traditional route, right? So the majority of our clients, I would say, um, start with an IT service catalog and they build the kind of the, the what we would consider typical IT services, right? Um, and then, as they start to learn what they can do with the tool and how the power that they really have, they start to explore other avenues. Um, in this case, uh, we're, we're going in a different direction. So, um, originally, when we, you know, from the beginning of the sales process, it was all about this cloud store and what we could build and, uh, you know, provisioning, kind of blah blah. And uh, since, kind of, kind of, based on the success of that, 
of that of that project and kind of the time to market and all the contributing factors that led to the success of this initial project, um, they are they decided to replace an internal service catalog, a homegrown solution that they've had for years that there was never just any value in replacing. Um, and so I, I, to me that's kind of interesting that where we typically go from IT service catalog to other, right. where they've seen the value in this other solution and now are moving to, okay, now, now let's replace this as well. Yeah, the, 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 it seems to happen that generally, as you said, the other direction, but it was great that they recognized, all right, well, we solved this, this challenge we wanted to solve and now we have this platform to do other things with. You know, what else can we do? Well, why don't we use it for uh, you know what it's uh, what it's best known for in a way is uh, service catalog. Yeah, and I'm you know I, I'm excited to see where they go next. Um, I think it's, we we're very happy to to see when customers really understand the, the the power of the platform and start to consider it differently. So the fact that they started there uh, is for me truly exciting because who knows where they'll go next. Right. Well, great. Again. Uh, Understanding that you already have something in place and that maybe there's other, other things you can do with it, um, just a very powerful message. Uh, last but not least, and back to clean up, will be Mr. John Ortiz. And John's going to talk to us about how one of our financial clients is managing business and financial compliance. But one of our uh, financial clients, I think I said compliance twice, uh, is managing business and financial compliance. Uh, so with that, uh, again, devilishly handsome as you see here, I'm going to let John Ortiz take this one. Thank you, Russell, for such an elaborate introduction. <laughs> um, you know, as we do with all our clients, you know, and as we look to undertake continuous process improvement efforts, you know, we challenge our customers and ourselves to tackle each opportunity within the business by using the service catalog as an enterprise service platform. And so working with, you know, one of our clients in the financial sector, uh, we were thinking of areas and targeted areas of, of improvement uh, that can assist the business. Compliance is a key component in the financial world, as it is in many businesses. So we decided together that uh, the area of, of, of compliance would be a cornerstone of our next efforts. The situation, uh, Basically, Russell, is that they have a, a, a process of, that is based on managing proof of claims. And, and these are, are new filings and updates that occur on a daily basis. And several elements of this process, you know, are manually intensive, starting with the daily file of all of the new and updates uh, that could range anywhere from 50 to over 2,000 files formatted in an Excel spreadsheet. Taking each of these items into individual emails to notify the appropriate branches, to notify them of assignments and work necessary uh, to fulfill this proof of claim. A lot of time the results could vary, but our key task was how could we minimize the risk? How can we ensure that we don't miss any critical dates or the tasks that make up completion of such dates? At the same time, not impact any customer satisfaction. So by using automation within uh, the enterprise service catalog, in a less than six, six week effort of configuration, testing, and a production go live, we are able to create a new service that would upload this Excel file, parse it into individual requests that will automatically route tasks to the appropriate branches um, that satisfy each of those clients. And, and you and I were chatting about this before. Part of the original process, and still part of the process, is that multiple individuals at the branches might get these notifications. Um, so how do we ensure that that multiple people aren't working on the same task? Uh, correct, Russ. So one of the things we did want to impact is the fact that many people at any given branch are capable of doing the work. So we didn't want to limit it to any particular person. So within the tool, by, by sending out individual tasks to each of the participants within the branch, 
once any of them selected that task, it was no longer available for anyone else in the branch to perform the work, thereby eliminating any possibility of duplication of effort uh, and or, uh, you know, uh, the double work that sometimes can't go into uh, just to simply satisfy a single task. Is there an es uh, escalation point? What, what if nobody has taken on this task by 2 in the afternoon? What, what's the escalation? Right. So what we did is we built into each of these tasks based on their company metrics. Uh, we built in notifications um, so that at the onset all the participants were notified that tasks needed to, to take place. We built in reminders to satisfy the, the amount of time each task must be completed by. And in the unlikely event those tasks aren't completed, an escalation that would go up to management stating that these tasks were not completed and must be completed by the end of the day. All of this ties into the ability to meet the end goal, which is managing to the dates of the proof of claim. So with these reminders, with these escalations and notifications, we can stay on track. It facilitates real-time monitoring, not only at the branch level, but also at the regional level and at the company level for all these requests. And you know, let me not understate the importance of having the ability to manage to that cri those critical dates is key. And informing the leadership of key cost components along the way was also a very big win for them in this situation. And because they're, they're doing this through the tool, it's the transaction engine, and now from an auditing standpoint, all this data is captured. Absolutely. We're, we maintain a very detailed request history for each individual item that is performed that can capture from when it began, who it went to, who performed the work at the various stages and when, and even from the standpoint of any matters where an escalation was possible, were used more so as a potential training tool to ensure that the branch is understood on a going forward versus the importance of getting these tasks done. And so by having this, it facilitated not only their internal management of the request, but on the back end, any auditing requirements they may have. Right. So it, again, uh, here we have something that really falls more in the category of business process automation, not service catalog transactions and yet it's all being done within the same platform. I imagine those are IT for that particular organization. I mean, in the past, we've had the challenges that they had, and we've had several deployments. By taking a different look at a system that is currently in place, and how can you utilize it out of IT, they were able to realize this um, change, uh, which is led to several other initiatives that are already underway in other parts of the business. Well, that's great. So in uh, uh, and we're talking about the service of how do you leverage it to go beyond base and again you may have the fact that you consider doing this but for you may be able to play for future projects and we we prefer to do that all the knowledge Basic IT provisions. How can you help with HR management, uh, cloud service management? John just told us a great story about com financial compliance with a client. But beyond that, possibly operations, ITFM, or maybe even security. These are all the painful operations that can be the catalog platform or the enterprise service platform. With that, thank you. Uh, we are going to take some questions because we do have some time left. Uh, and so on behalf of the team, thank you before we get to the questions. And if somebody could pull up the question window for me, that would be great. All right. So here we have one that says, uh, for the NFT company, uh, provider, KPU, uh, what cloud platform are you provisioning to? Um, so, in, in this case, they are provisioning to VMware and the Amazon Web Services, um, but the way that they've configured the solution, they've really left that open to, to whatever's next. Um, so, 
So, you know, from a, from a PMG standpoint, we have various connectors to different cloud platforms. So they've configured their solution in a way to support that. So today specifically it's VMware and Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, but in the future, if they had a requirement to implement Azure Cloud or OpenStack, uh, whatever, something that doesn't exist today, um, right. they've set themselves up for that. Yeah, that's, that landscape is certainly changing. And uh, I think that, that further strengthens the message that you want your service catalog to be built for change. You want to be able to make those changes uh, and get right back into production. You may have to switch from one day to Azure, uh, you know, two weeks later, and, and is, is your workflow and your form set up to be able to make those changes uh, in, in that amount of time? Yep, so. completely. Great. Uh, once the HR started using the tool, this is you, Janesh, since you spoke about HR, did they have to purchase any additional licensing or modules for the catalog? So I think I understand what they're saying there is IT was had a service catalog, and it sounds like um, when HR started using it, did they, what did they have to buy? Yeah, from a module standpoint, there was really nothing else to purchase. It was more of just configuring the tool to the HR's requirements. So that's really all out of the box functionality. But, but in terms of licensing, that's probably specific to an organization. So in, in, in this client specific, IT was using it. So now HR came on board, so it could be a new user base. So it's something to think about in terms of licensing. Right. They may need to increase the number of licenses. Yeah, in theory, it's the same users because they're they're making these IT requests through their IT service catalog, and now the same users may be making requests Correct. here. But I think the the message there is that the more successful you are with uh, with your uh, service catalog and other uh, deployments, and the more acceptance you get within the organization, you may need to get additional user licenses if that's Correct. necessary. Yeah, and I guess to add to that, this is Gabe. Um, in my case, with my client, they're kind of in the same situation, right? Um, they've gone from a cloud services to also implementing the separate IT service catalog, um, and you know, there, there's really no no additional cost. And while like I like to think that it's completely based on delivery, and the yeah. so good that they've decided to come more, and I know that part of what went into that decision is cost. And since there's no additional module to buy, um, all that they need to invest is, you know, is really their time to configure that next step for them. Um, so that's important. Right. Uh, your question, okay, skip it. Are all of these customers on premise? And uh, I, I'll take that. It, the answer is, in this case, uh, two out of three were. Um, and you know the the question of SaaS versus on premise. We could we could spend a whole another webinar, uh, and there's many webinars out there available to talk about that. We are definitely seeing more and more requests for the going to the cloud and, and being a SaaS based model. Uh, whereas even a few years back, that we didn't really hear that. But we're we're getting many many more inquiries about that, and and more and more new customers every year that are going with the SaaS model versus on prem. Uh, but to us. Uh, that's it doesn't really matter. It works both ways. How are we doing on time, guys? Up. Oh, I, I have us as 30 more seconds. Let's try and get it in. Uh, oh, well, this might not be a 30-second question, but uh, how do you integrate with Amazon Web Services? So I'll let the product guy talk about how we actually integrate with AWS. Yeah. Um, so the way that we do that is we, we, we leverage the Amazon Web Services API, right? So they they publish web services that our applications can consume. Um, and but more specifically in the product, we do that we do that in two ways. So on the workflow side, um, we have an Amazon Amazon Cloud Action Palette that allows them to perform all the various various actions that they need to support the business process. So provisioning the machine, um, I mentioned like the admin tasks that they can do. So things like powering the machine on and off, updating the RAM, those are all actions that are a part of this um, Amazon Palace we built. Um, on the form side, they, they're leveraging a PMG data provider that um, goes out to those web services and allows us to query for you know things like the list of machines that I happen to have in the cloud. Um, so there's you know the same set of web services for Amazon, but they're leveraging it from two different aspects of the system. The business process side with the action palette and on form side with the PMG data provider. 
Wow. Okay. Well, you, you, you were much more succinct than I thought you could be with uh, that particular question. So uh, I think that's going to do it for today. We, again, we want to thank you. Um, before you go, start, start searching our webinars for how the service catalog saved the planet. Uh, that one doesn't exist yet. I, I made that one up. But we believe that the service catalog can save a lot of business, save a lot of uh, heartache and, and frustration for manual processes. So we encourage you to do that with your service catalog or with the one that you're evaluating, bring it on in the future. Thank you, everybody.